Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. All right, it's time for a dolphin play date, also known as the cutest thing of all time. Stick around for long enough and you might just get attached to these little friends. Which brings us to the topic of this lesson, attachment theory. Attachment theory focuses on the bond that forms between a young child and their caregivers. This concept gets a lot of attention, both from real psychologists and from pseudoscience self-help bloggers, because it's centered around the idea that how a child bonds with their caregiver predicts important aspects of their personality as adults. John Bowlby is the pioneer of attachment theory, so we place some bowling pins here to help you remember him. Bowlby did most of his research from the 1960s to the 1980s, one of his key beliefs was that it's innate for infants to form a strong bond with their caregiver, because this bond helps them to stay safe and healthy before they can take care of themselves. Kind of like how ducklings imprint on their mama because it helps them survive. And that's also why these pins are reminiscent of a duck with imprinted babies. Another one of Bowlby's key beliefs was that infants form a strong attachment to a single adult, an idea he called monotropy. He thought that this bond was generally formed with the mother, hence why these ducklings are bonded to their mom instead of their dad, or anyone else. However, more recent research suggests that most infants have attachments to multiple caregivers. So Bowlby's belief that the mother-child bond is especially unique in early childhood doesn't really hold up these days. Okay, the last important thing to know about Bowlby is that he coined the idea of maternal deprivation. Basically, this is the idea that there's a critical period for a child to bond with their mother. So if this bond doesn't form before the age of three or so, or if that bond is disrupted or lost while the child is very young, the child's social development may be affected. And even though a lot of Bulby's ideas have been debunked, research actually does show that in many cases, the disruption of important bonds early in childhood does have an effect on social development and mental health. Though we now know that this bond can be with caregivers besides a mother. Okay, even though Bulby was the pioneer of attachment theory, when you think about this topic, you probably think of attachment styles, which arose from research by Bowlby's colleagues, Mary Ainsworth and Sylvia Bell. Ainsworth is the key name to remember here. So we've got this dartboard that's worth your aim. Worth, aim, Ainsworth, bada bing, bada boom. Ainsworth and Bell conducted a study called the Strange Situation Experiment. In each trial of this study, a young child and their mother were brought into a room with a stranger, while researchers observed through a one-way mirror. The researchers recorded how the child initially behaved in the presence of a stranger. Then, after some time, the mother quietly left the room, and the researchers noted how the child responded to being left alone with a stranger. Finally, the mother returned to see how the child reacted to reuniting with her. Based on the behaviors observed in this experiment, Ainsworth and Bell found that children's attachment to their mothers usually fell into one of two broad categories. Secure or insecure? This baby securely attached to her parents' chest represents secure attachment. In Ainsworth's experiment, children who were securely attached to their mother usually felt safe venturing away from their mom in the presence of a stranger and would explore the unfamiliar room. This baby looks so jolly because having a secure attachment style in childhood is associated with having better social outcomes later on in life and generally feeling more confident and secure in adult relationships. Conversely, this baby's attachment to their parent is a little less reliable. You might say they're insecurely attached. In Ainsworth's experiment, insecurely attached children usually clung to their mothers upon entering the unfamiliar room because they didn't feel secure enough to explore the room on their own. And unsurprisingly, this baby's a little shaken up about falling from his carrier. His distress should remind you that insecure attachment styles are associated with having insecurity in relationships as adults and even being reluctant to bond with others at all. Now, insecure attachment styles can actually be broken down into three subcategories, avoidant, ambivalent, and disorganized attachment styles. We've already mentioned how securely versus insecurely attached children behaved at the beginning of this experiment, when they were in the room with their mom and a stranger. But how these children are further classified into these subcategories largely has to do with how they responded to their mother leaving the room and then returning. So to explore all the details here, we're going to add some more young dolphins to the scene to represent the details on secure, avoidant, ambivalent, and disorganized attachment. Each dolphin's expression will represent how children with that attachment style responded to their mother leaving the room 
and each will be holding, or united with, a stuffed animal to represent how they responded to reuniting with their mom. Lastly, each dolphin will have a bottle near them that symbolizes the caregiving traits that are associated with developing that attachment style. Because, you know, parents have been known to provide babies with nourishing bottles and lifelong psychological damage. Okay, let's start with this little guy in front of his securely attached sister to review some more details on secure attachment. He's been well-loved and looked after, and he's got a full bottle to prove it. That's because it's believed that secure attachments generally form when caregivers are sensitive and responsive to a child's physical and emotional needs. But despite his security, this kiddo's just a tiny bit teary-eyed to remind you that in Ainsworth's experiment, securely attached children were slightly upset when their mothers left. You know, they missed them, but they were confident enough to cope. Finally, his ecstatic stuffed puppy should help you remember that securely attached children were very excited when their mothers returned to the room. Just like any good pup is super excited when their owner comes home. Okay, this next dolphin is holding up a fin to avoid interacting with her pals. So she represents avoidant attachment. Her bottle is empty and full of cobwebs, like it's been neglected. That's because it's believed that children develop avoidant attachment styles when they have caregivers who neglect their emotional needs and ignore them when they're upset. And overall, this results in children becoming pretty indifferent to the presence of their caregiver. See, notice that this kid looks pretty blasé? That's because children with avoidant attachment styles weren't usually bothered when their mother left the room during the experiment. Plus, they were also pretty indifferent when she came back. Just like that honey badger this dolphin's holding, these kiddos just didn't give a flip. Now, if you have no idea what a honey badger has to do with not caring, do a quick video search for a honey badger to find out exactly how many f**ks honey badgers don't give. All right, our next dolphin was given milk of inconsistent quality because it's believed that ambivalent attachment styles develop when a child has an inconsistent caregiver who responds unpredictably to the child being upset. And notice the ambivalent shrug emoji on this kid's shirt to symbolize ambivalent attachment. With this attachment style, when the mother leaves, the child tends to become very distressed. And that explains why this fella is so distressed about being dropped off at this play date. Now, once the mother returns, the child tends to be unsure or ambivalent about her presence. Just like cats, who are never quite sure how they feel when their owner comes home. Do they miss you, or do they just wish you were dead? Yeah, probably a little bit of both. The final attachment style was actually described a bit after Ainsworth's original experiments. Her colleague, Mary Main, defined disorganized attachment styles in the early 1980s, which you can remember with our final dolphin's disorganized play area. This kiddo's got a rather fearsome bottle of poison because it's believed that children tend to develop a disorganized attachment style when they fear their caregivers. See her toy gorilla? Well, we think gorillas are kind of unpredictable. Are they adorable giants? Or do they just want to beat you to a pulp? I can't actually answer that question without breaking and entering at the zoo. So for now, that unpredictable stuffed gorilla should help you remember that children with disorganized attachment styles don't show predictable patterns of behavior when their caregiver leaves or returns. The thing that is consistent is that these kids often show signs of fear when interacting with their caregiver. Just like this guy is showing signs of fear at his dubious bottle. All right, that covers the key attachment styles. But a quick note before we wrap up. In this lesson, we mostly mention the attachment between a child and their mother. But that's just because that's the relationship that was studied in Ainsworth's strange situation experiment. As I already mentioned, it's now believed that attachment theory can be applied to many child caregiver bonds. Okay, now we can recap. John Bowlby pioneered attachment theory. He believed that the bond between a caregiver and child evolved because it increases survival. Bowlby is also associated with the ideas of monotropy and maternal deprivation. Mary Ainsworth led the strange situation experiment which resulted in her describing several styles of attachment between children and their caregivers. Importantly, it's believed that a person's attachment style as a young child often influences their behavior and relationships as an adult. It's believed that children become securely attached to their caregiver when their caregiver is responsive to their needs. Children with a secure attachment style tend to be upset when their caregivers leave and very excited when they return. As adults, People with secure attachment styles typically feel confident in relationships and comfortable expressing their emotions. On the other hand, insecurely attached children often have difficulty expressing their emotions in adulthood and may have difficulty forming healthy relationships with others. 
There are three subcategories of insecure attachment, avoidant, ambivalent, and disorganized. Children with an avoidant attachment style typically have caregivers who neglect their physical or emotional needs. These children are unbothered when their caregiver leaves them and are indifferent upon reuniting with that caregiver. The caregivers of ambivalently attached children are often inconsistent in how they respond to their child. Children with this attachment style tend to be very upset when their caregiver leaves, but then react ambivalently upon their return. Finally, children can develop a disorganized attachment style if they fear their caregivers. In this case, children typically react unpredictably when a caregiver comes and goes, but they do consistently show signs of fear towards that caregiver. All right, well, like any good playdate, this one had plenty of toys, tears, and toxic substances. I just hope whatever was in that poison bottle tastes better than the glitter glue my friend convinced me to eat in kindergarten. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I better go make a few phone calls to their parents.